Was California once a battlefield, a war zone filled with youth and criminal gangs all over the control of the state's lucrative crack cocaine epidemic? Indeed, the Golden State had its dark days in the 1980s and 1990s. Crime surged like a tidal wave swallowing the state whole, fueled by an insatiable demand for crack cocaine. The streets became a chessboard with youth and criminal gangs as pawns, jostling for control of this lucrative trade. The police, the supposed guardians of law and order, found themselves in a relentless tug of war with these gangs. Violent confrontations were a daily occurrence, a grim dance of power and survival. This constant clash culminated in the infamous riots of the early 1990s, a spectacle of anarchy and destruction that rattled the very foundations of the state. As the state descended into chaos, hidden forces were at play. Unbeknownst to many, this uncontrollable war was just the tip of the iceberg. Could the CIA, a federal agency sworn to protect the nation, have played a role in bringing drugs into America? This question continues to echo through the annals of history, casting a long, dark shadow over the turbulent decades of the 80s and 90s. Allegations have been made, fingers have been pointed, and yet, the truth remains as elusive as smoke. The narrative that has emerged, however, is chilling. It's a tale of a clandestine operation, hidden agendas in a government agency allegedly using the drug trade to fund international missions. If true, this means that the very institution tasked with safeguarding the American people may have been complicit in feeding the engine of crime and addiction that gripped California and extended its icy tendrils across the border into Canada. The human cost of this alleged operation was staggering. Communities were ravaged, lives were destroyed, and the societal fabric was ripped apart. Children, youth, and the less advantaged were caught in the crossfire, their futures clouded by the specter of drugs, crime, and violence. The ripple effects were felt far and wide, from the sun-drenched streets of Los Angeles to the snowy expanse of the Canadian wilderness. While the CIA's role remains a subject of debate, the state of California was left dealing with a spiraling crime epidemic an epidemic that would lead to drastic measures, controversial laws, and a society grappling with the consequences of its past, but that's a story for another time. Faced with skyrocketing crime rates, did the politicians of California resort to a quick yet controversial fix? As the 1980s and 1990s saw California grappling with rampant crime, an answer seemed to emerge from the political circles. The Three Strikes Law. This law, meant to be a deterrent, promised lifetime imprisonment for third-time offenders, a move hoped to quell the waves of violence and drug-related crimes. However, this seemingly straightforward solution was not without its controversies. Critics argued that the law was a glaring manifestation of racial inequity, disproportionately affecting disadvantaged communities. They contended that the Three Strikes Law was less about justice and more about a systemic failure to address the root causes of crime in these communities. The law was also lambasted for its failure to rehabilitate offenders. Instead of helping convicts reintegrate into society with valuable life and job skills, the three strikes law seemed to discard them entirely. Critics argued that the focus should have been on rehabilitation, which could have potentially transformed these offenders into contributing members of society. The long-term cost to taxpayers was another criticism thrown at the law. With life sentences, the cost of housing, feeding, and providing medical care for these inmates would be borne by the taxpayers for decades. This financial burden could have been mitigated if the focus had been on rehabilitation and reintegration, thereby reducing the long-term costs. Despite the criticisms, proponents of the law maintained that it was a necessary step to curb crime rates. They argued that it served as a powerful deterrent, preventing potential offenders from committing crimes due to the fear of life imprisonment. The Three Strikes Law, a solution or a problem in disguise? This is the debate that continues to this day. It's a question that invites us to reflect on our justice system, its goals, and its impacts. As we delve deeper into these stories in our upcoming series, we'll continue to explore these complex issues, shedding light on the many facets of crime, justice, and their far-reaching implications. These stories of crime, controversy, and conspiracy are just the beginning. We're about to take you on a journey through the darkest chapters of history with our upcoming True Crime series. Brought to you by ProPix Canada Media and the award-winning James Cousineau, 
We'll uncover the hidden truths and untold stories that have shaped our world. So mark your calendars and prepare to be captivated. Join us as we delve deeper into the dark corners of true crime, starting January 15, 2024.